Section 5.2 Rapture Teachings There are three main theories about the rapture. They differ on when or if the rapture takes place. All three theories have some good scriptural basis, but because they do not make a distinction between tribulation and wrath, it has become impossible to reconcile the three points of view. Pre-tribulation theorists believe that the church is taken away from the earth before any of the tribulations of Revelation occur. They believe this because the Bible tells us that we will be saved from wrath. However, the gospel passages we have looked at in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21 tell us that the elect, which refers to both Jews and Gentiles, are gathered from the earth just after the Great Tribulation. This is the main problem with the pre-trib theory and is the basis for the post-trib theory. Post-tribulation theorists essentially believe that there is no rapture. This is because of the Gospel accounts, which state that the elect remain on the earth until after the Great Tribulation. So if you believe that the cups of wrath at the end of Revelation are the Great Tribulation, this leads to the conclusion that the elect must stay here until the Second Coming. I find it impossible to reconcile this view with the many verses that say we will be saved from wrath. Not to mention the recurring pattern of God pulling his people out before terrible events throughout the Bible. Mid-tribulation theorists attempt to blend the two theories. They believe that we will remain on earth for some of the tribulation, but will be taken away before things get too bad. I am offering a slightly modified theory, which is similar to the mid-trib theory, one that resolves the biblical issues of all three theories. The main difference is that I have renamed the two major sections in Revelation, the Great Tribulation and the Time of Wrath. As previously discussed, I have not done this based on a preconceived belief or assumption, but based on the given order of events in the book of Revelation and the occurrence of the Greek words which mean tribulation and wrath. Also, because the Gospel accounts put the Great Tribulation immediately before the cosmic disturbances of the sixth seal. The moon turns red, the sun goes dark, and the stars fall. Simply put, I believe we are here for all of the Great Tribulation, which ends at the opening of the sixth seal, but we are saved from the time of wrath. This teaching resolves the biblical conflict because all three theories are basically true once we have established the difference between tribulation and wrath. I want to look just a little more closely at what these cups of wrath will be filled with. To do this, we first need to look at the harlot from Revelation 17 and 18, because the contents of the cup of wrath which she holds in her hand are clearly described. When we first see the harlot, she is holding a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness for fornication. She has a cup filled with her own sin. Two verses later, as she drinks it, she becomes drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Therefore, her cup of sin includes the blood of murdered martyrs. In the next chapter, Revelation 18, we learn that it is she who has lured the nations away from God. She has kept them from receiving salvation and has caused them to remain under wrath by making them drink from her cup. Here is the passage from Revelation 18, verses 2 to 6. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen, and it has become the dwelling place of demons and a prison of every unclean spirit, and a cage of every unclean bird which has been hated, because of the wine of the anger or wrath of her fornication, which all the nations have drunk, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth became rich from the power of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you may not be partakers of her sins, and that you may not receive her plagues. For her sins join together, even up to heaven, and God has remembered her unjust deeds. Reward her as she has rewarded you, and double to her double, according to her works. In the cup which she mixed, mix double to her. In the fourth line of this passage, the word anger in bold is actually the Greek word for wrath. So we can see that her cup of wine, which is filled with sin, fornication, and blood, is also a cup filled with wrath. Fornication is often symbolic of false religion in the Bible. A little lower, it says, Come out of her, my people, that you may not receive her plagues. Plagues are another link between the harlot's cup and the seven cups of wrath. 
because the cups of wrath at the end of Revelation contain plagues. Yahweh calls his people away from her because the harlot is destined to receive a double portion of wrath. We can't be sure why she receives a double portion, but it could be because she has caused others to sin. That always stirs up God's anger. Look at the way Jesus treated sinners when he was on earth. He would often become extremely angry when rebuking the Pharisees or Sadducees for their sins. They were the religious leaders and teachers. But he was gentle when he corrected a prostitute or tax collector. Tax collectors were often thieves and considered traitors by their own people because they collected for the Romans. We know that God holds us accountable for our own sins, but if we purposely cause someone else to sin, perhaps we are also accountable for that sin. Since the harlot is responsible for causing all nations to drink from her cup, this could be why she is given a double portion of wrath.